What if I told you you can make a really cool looking map for Foundry VTT that looks something like this in less than one hour? Well, it's possible with a little something called Dungeon Alchemist. So this map that I just showed you actually only took me less than an hour to make in Dungeon Alchemist where it generated all of these rooms for me and I tweaked what was in the rooms and the, the assets and such myself to make it match nicely and I added the fog, etc. But I did this in under an hour. I am not an artist, I am not a map maker or level designer, so this was awesome. Hi everyone, my name is Fondu. I run this channel called Dice and Easy by myself and I teach you Foundry VTT tips and tricks and tutorials, TTRPG general discussions, and I post daily TTRPG memes. So if you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button down there. So there's this really cool piece of software called Dungeon Alchemist, which is available on Steam Early Access currently, meaning of course that it is not a finished product, it is currently in development, but it allows you to make very cool looking maps with 3D art with no map making or art skills required in a very short amount of time. Now this software of course is not free, it costs 38 euros, so that'll translate to whatever your local price is on Steam, but you can buy it on Steam right now. I'll put a link down to it in the description. And remember, Steam, of course, has a two-hour refund policy, so you can try it. If you don't like it, you can refund it always on Steam. Now then, I'm going to show you how to bring a map made in Dungeon Alchemist over to Foundry VTT. And it is not as hard as you think. So let's get started shall we? Now we are inside Dungeon Alchemist and we're looking at the blank setup here. So I'm just going to make a basic bedroom here. Let's make a hallway over here. And then another bedroom real quick. There we go. So now we have made a simple map. You can see here it is not very symmetrical, um, but don't worry about it. It's a little bit ugly, but I'm just making this quickly to showcase a point. If you would like to see how Dungeon Alchemist works, how you can make these rooms so easily and edit stuff, etc., I'm going to be dropping a video about that next. So the next video is going to be a quick overlook on Dungeon Alchemist. So if you're excited for that, hit the subscribe button and click the little bell to get notified when that goes live. So now that we have this map done here so simply we go up here to the top left corner to file and we go to export now by default it is going to give me a foundry export let me zoom in here we are so it's going to give me a foundry export here by default and it is going to ask what file type I would like to choose. Now, here, it really depends on what you're going for. An image is the easiest one to go for. Of course, then it is static. So if you have any moving elements in the map, like fog or smoke or fire or whatever, that is, of course, not going to be moving. So if you have moving elements that you want to keep in your overhead map, then you want to choose a video. But do note that um, MP4 video type is meant for smaller maps, so the quality is going to be fairly low and then the higher quality webm maps it's going to take a very long time to render i'm talking about possibly hours depending on how complex your map is but we're going to go for a jpeg here to be simple then you can choose what type of perspective you would like so currently there is 3d walls which means you can see that the walls and, and everything here are three-dimensional but you can change it to be a limited perspective so you can still see that it's 3D, but it's a little bit more limited, or you can go for an orthographic view, which means it flattens it completely. So now there is no three dimensions to it. It is purely 2D. This is again, up to you what you like. I'm gonna go for the perspective 3D wall. Then we can choose the image quality. I'm gonna go for very high quality. And then the export size. I'm gonna choose small borders since I don't want any extra space around the borders. You can, of course, choose a bigger border, then it adds some extra space around it. But I don't currently really need that. Uh, color scheme also, if you are going to print this in black and white, you can also choose a print friendly grayscale. Um, I'm going to go for color and then if you would like the grid on or off I personally prefer to have the grid on since grid based movement is important in games like D&D &D and Pathfinder so then you get to choose 
how transparent you want it to be. You can make it very faded or you can make it very obvious. I like it to be somewhere around here on the 70% or, sh or so marks that is visible but doesn't obstruct the actual art itself. And then you can also choose a color for the grid. Gray is fine in my opinion. Uh, then we go to export. It's gonna open this window here and you get to choose what you want to save this as or what the name for it you want it to be. Now you're gonna notice that it's a, it's not an image actually that is saving, it is a .json file. So don't worry about that, that is normal. It is also going to save an image of it. So we're gonna call this YouTube video tutorial map. Save that, it's exporting over here, you can see, and boom, it is done. And it will open the folder where you chose to save it. And now you can actually see that the map JPEG is also there. And if I double click it, it will open and you can see the map here. It is exported. Again, not the best map, not very symmetrical, but that is not important for this tutorial. And then you can see the JSON file also here. And you can see other files I've been testing out using Dungeon Alchemist. Now then, let's hop on over to Foundry VTT and I will show you how to bring this map over there. Now then, we're over on Foundry VTT and I'm gonna show you how to bring that map that you just made in Dungeon Alchemist over to Foundry VTT. So first, we're gonna go over here to the Scenes tab at the top. Let me zoom in so you can see this that says Scenes and we're going to create a new scene with the button create scene. You get to call this whatever you want. I'm going to call it YouTube tutorial just for sake of clarity. And then you can put it in a folder if you want. I don't have any folders right now, so it doesn't matter. And then create new scene. Now let me move my camera aside so you can see what is underneath my camera. There we go. So this window is going to pop up when you create the scene. We don't need the window right now, so let us close it for now. And then going back over here to our Scenes tab, you're going to see your level over here. And now it's actually there twice, because I recorded this already once and I did a little flub, so it's there twice. But don't worry about it, that's fine. Just find your level there and then right click on it and go to Import Data. Import Data. You click that, it's going to ask you here to choose a file to import. So this is the JSON file, the .json file that I was mentioning that we are going to import now into the scene data. So now we're here, we found where we saved our file, YouTube video tutorial map.json, open. It's going to add it here, it says, here it is. And then we press import. Now it says YouTube video tutorial map was successfully imported from JSON. Uh, what does that mean? Well, firstly, the name changed because the name of our JSON file was a little bit different. But if we open this with right click and then view scene, this is what it looks like currently. Uh, it looks a little bit weird. You can only see some lights and stuff here. It doesn't really look correct. That's fine because it brought in the some data from that map. So that includes like lights and doors, etc. So what we're going to do now is go back over here to the right hand side where the scenes are, right click and then go over to configure. So now this window that opened before is actually going to be relevant. So we are going to go here where it says background image and then there's this little button here, browse files. We click that. It is going to open your asset library in Foundry and ask for you which map would you like to use. Now, the map of course is not here yet because we have not brought it into Foundry yet. So what we're going to do is go here to the upload section, choose file, and then choose the YouTube video tutorial map over here. It is going to upload it, so it takes a second. And there we go, it is uploaded now. So now, as you can see, it's selected over here. Now we just click select file. So now it shows the file path over there and then save changes. It is going to load and here we go. The map has now been added into Foundry. Let me just pop my camera onto the other side once again. We're gonna zoom out and there you have it. The map is in here with doors as well, though the doors are a little bit tiny as we can see over here, but we have doors here doors are indeed in place. You can see the lights over there. So if we switch the light tab over on the left hand side, you can see lights are set up here very nicely. And if we go to the wall controls, we can see there is a door over here. There's a door over there. There's a, I believe, secret walls over here for the 
for the windows. So everything is pretty nicely set up. But of course, you can then tweak stuff if you would like to. But now your map is here. You can set tokens in here. I can grab a token from here. Let's put the barbarian in there. Boom. You got the bar barbarian token and site also is working correctly as per lighting and walls and so on. And if we open this door here, boom, we have vision, we can go through. Pretty neat, right? And that's all it is. Very simple. And yeah, that's all you need to know about bringing a map from Dungeon Alchemist over to Foundry VTT. There you have it. That's how you easily bring a map from Dungeon Alchemist over to Foundry VTT. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in Dungeon Alchemist. As I said, there is a link to this, their Steam store page in the description below, and it is 38 euros in, in euros. I don't know what that price is gonna be in your local currency, but I think it's a very fair price for such a tremendously powerful and great tool. And as I mentioned, if you wanna see more of the features of Dungeon Alchemist, my next video is gonna be on that topic, so subscribe, hit the bell to know when that goes live. I also stream on twitch.tv slash dice and easy, that is twitch.tv slash dice and easy, where I talk about tabletop RPGs. I actually showed off Dungeon Alchemist in my previous streams, and you can come and check that out and, and chat with me live there, so go give you a follow over there as well. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.